On a cold winter evening on the 14th of January 2016, within the tranquil upscale village of Helmshaw in Lancashire, England, 60-year-old mother of two and successful businesswoman Sadie Hartley would be discovered murdered, face down in a pool of her own blood, by an act described by authorities as demonically savage in its nature as a result of an evil and meticulous 17-month-long premeditated murder plot committed by a jealous and obsessive love rival, 35-year-old Sarah Williams, assisted by her friend and accomplice, 56-year-old Katrina Walsh. The story that would unfold following what had been described as the uncontrolled butchery of Miss Hartsley on that bitter winter night in January would be one fueled by a fatal obsession, jealousy, sex, deceit and pure evil. Not much information has been released to the public in regards to Sarah's childhood, but from what is understood from the case details provided, Sarah wasn't faced with any traumatic events up until the age of 13. At her trial, she told the jury of how she endured a quote, bad start to life, when she claimed she was a victim of a kidnapping and sexual assault in January of 1995. At the time of the alleged crime, her story would become front page news of British newspapers. She would tell detectives that she was abducted while riding home from Wirral Riding Centre, located in Chester, England. She claimed that the man locked her in the boot of a Vauxhall Cavalier and drove her to a house where she was told to cover her eyes as she was led up a path to a house and was allegedly subject to a serious sexual assault. Then she said the attacker put her back in the boot of the car and dumped her in a remote countryside 30 miles from her home, where a passing lorry driver took her to a service station on the M6. However, following a major investigation by police, no one would ever be caught for the alleged crime. Those who knew Williams at the time claimed that she had made the whole story up and that she was a fantasist. One such person who would make this accusation was Phil Jones, the owner of Wirral Riding Centre, saying, quote, Her false claims were the talk of the Wirral when it happened. She was a total fantasist. She was seeing a married guy. They used to disappear into a horse box together. I think Sarah concocted the abduction hoax to explain her disappearance over a weekend with him. Williams continued to attend the horse riding centre, where she would befriend her future accomplice, Katrina Walsh. It was here five years later, in 1999, now aged 17 years old, that Miss Williams met and fell in love with David Hardwick, a man three times her age at 57 years old, who was a very successful businessman and married father. He became Sarah's sugar daddy, ensuring that she would forever live beyond her means. Not only would he transfer £320, or around $400, weekly into her bank account, but would take Williams on exotic holidays, up to 12 a year, and provide £75,000, or around $94,000, to pay half of the purchasing price of her first home. A day before her 30th birthday in 2010, Sarah drove past the Chill Factor Indoor Ski Centre in Manchester, England. Feeling keen to learn something new, she would make a decision that would initiate a chain of events leading to that fatal 2016 January night. I need to know. And I need to try and make some sense. Excited and optimistic of her new challenge, she would proceed to learn very quickly and over a short period of time that not only did she become an experienced skier, but she also would land a job as a sales advisor for the centre's travel agents. It would be within a few months of employment that the ever flirtatious Williams would enter an affair with her ski instructor, 47-year-old married Thai martial arts gym owner known as Master A in June 2011. The affair would span just under 12 months, being put to an end by Master A due to Sarah's possessive and jealous ways. She would proceed to target him, letting his car tyres down and attempting to get her friend Katrina Walsh to place foam in his car exhaust pipes. This was followed in May 2012 by Williams, visiting his residence to tell his wife of their affair. 
she would proceed to send a letter to the residents two weeks later detailing their relationship as well as claiming she was pregnant, of which she wasn't, and even going as far as to send a baby scan photo that belonged to one of her friends. For months after, she would park outside of the residence and stare from her car for hours at the house. After months of harassment, however, his wife would inform the authorities on September 10th, 2012, who would warn Miss Williams, ending the stalking ordeal. At this point, her friends would describe her as a bunny boiler and she would self-proclaim herself as a psycho and a she-devil. Following the previous affair, and still bankrolled by her older companion, she would swiftly enter into several affairs with other married men, of which she worked with, all of which would end quickly due to Sarah's obsessive behaviours. It's in mid-2012 when she was to begin her next conquest, but her obsessive and promiscuous tendencies would ease her even closer towards her evil fate. Police and paramedics found Sadie Hartley's body in her hallway. And the cause of death has been confirmed as multiple stab wounds. Ian Johnston was a retired fireman after 31 years of service and even being held a hero and receiving a special commendation for his rescue and relief work during the Armenian earthquake in 1988. During his career, he would go on to marry a colleague, Jackie Johnston, and the couple would later have a daughter named Hannah. However, Ian's first marriage would end and a newly single and retired Mr Johnston would meet communications director and successful businesswoman Sadie Hartley in 2002. Miss Hartley, a mother of two children in their 20s to her ex-husband, was also seeking companionship. The couple would find love in each other eventually living together in Miss Hartley's home in Great Budworth, Cheshire. Following an on and off relationship with Miss Hartley over the years since they met in 2002 and currently on a relationship hiatus from her, in 2011 Mr Johnston, a keen skiing fanatic and established instructor, would be employed at the same Chill Factor Indoor Ski Centre in Manchester where the now 31-year-old Sarah Williams worked and was in a secret affair at the time with her instructor, known as Master A. The affair had ended between Sarah and her instructor, and she would pursue others which would also end like her previous affairs. By December of 2012, Mr Johnston was still in a fairly unstable relationship with Miss Hartley, when he would begin to start a brief relationship with Miss Williams, where they exchanged explicit text messages a sexual relationship would develop very soon after, but be short-lived, lasting until around September of 2013, when he would end it, stating Miss Williams was too clingy and possessive. Sarah continues to date Mr Hardwick at the same time, just like she did with the previous affairs. By summer of 2013, Mr Johnston reignites his relationship with Miss Hartley, and in the October, the pair would travel to Ecuador for a 22-day getaway together. However, Mr Johnston would continue to communicate with Williams via exchanges of explicit text messages while on the trip. To make the situation more bizarre, in December 2013, Miss Hartsley and Mr Johnston went on a French skiing holiday together and stayed at the same hotel as Williams and her sugar daddy partner, Mr Hardwick. During the holiday, Williams and Johnston continued to exchange sexual messages between one another, quoting from a series of texts found by an investigator. Williams said, Loved foot cuddling with you under the table last night. By the summer of 2014, however, the unstable relationship between Johnston and Hartley began to gain some balance. The couple's love had been rekindled at that point, but this did not sit well with the obsessive Sarah Williams. By the September of the same year, Williams had sent a letter to Miss Hartley candidly detailing the affair with Mr Johnston. Williams believed that such an act would ensure that their relationship would fall apart, but she was wrong. The letter would bring the couple closer together and they made the decision that Ian was to sell his home and the couple would move in together in November of 2014 into a £500,000 detached home 
located on Sunnybank Road in the upscale village of Helmshaw, Lancashire. Although the relationship had been restored, Mr Johnston would still proceed to exchange explicit text messages, of which some contained naked pictures from both parties. This would die down, but then later be reignited after the pair bump into each other in May 2015 at the Chill Factor Centre, at which point messages between the pair would resume. It would be December 2nd, 2015, that both Ian Johnston and Sadie Hartley would attend a Christmas party at the Chill Factor Ski Centre. A chilling photo exists that pictures both Ian and Sadie with Sarah Williams in the background just over a month before Sadie was to be brutally murdered. It was that evening at the Christmas event that Sarah would plant a GPS tracking device onto Mr Johnston's car to establish where the couple's new home was located. The attack was a targeted and ferocious one on a lady who was home alone at the time she was killed. We now pick up the story from the point of view of our victim, Sadie Hartley. From all the details gathered so far, we know Miss Hartley was a successful, hard-working mother of two who only wanted to ensure that her love life would remain on track. As previously stated, William sent Hartley a letter detailing the affair she had been having with her partner Ian. It was an act of strength and resilience that she was able to gain strength in light of this information and a credit to her loyalty towards Ian and their future. Both Ian and herself attended the Christmas party on December 2nd, 2015 at Ian's Ski Centre, whilst very aware that Williams was also in attendance. But what she wasn't aware of, however, was that Ian was still in communication with Williams, sending explicit messages to one another. Bringing time forward to January 7th, 2016, a time of which must have been most relieving for Sadie, being that the previous year was over. In her eyes, Ian and herself were finally committed to one another, and the two can put the past behind them and live happily together. Ian at this point travels to Switzerland on a ski trip at which Sadie was going to join him on once she had tied up loose ends with her business. The day after Ian's departure to Switzerland, on the evening of January 7th, 2016, at approximately 8.30pm, Sadie would receive a knock on her door. She would think twice before opening the door, as she was alone and not expecting any visitors. Sadie would open the door to a white female holding a bunch of flowers in her hands and unable to recognise the lady, asked, Hello, can I help you? To which the female replied, Hi, Sadie, Sadie is it? it? Yes, that's me, said Sadie. These, These are, are for you, you, the lady stated, whilst proceeding to make her way back down Miss Hartsley's pathway and down the street. Sadie was very confused by the unusual exchange. The flowers came with no note and still had the Tesco supermarket sticker attached to them. A worried Sadie would send a text message to Ian over in Switzerland telling him, A woman has just this minute turned up at the door with a bunch of chrysanthemums, but don't know who they are from. Then she added, She knew my name. That's a bit worrying when I'm here on my own. No label or anything on them and late at night. The following day on January 8th, still rather worried by what had happened the previous evening, Sadie would email her business partner and best friend Julie Taylor saying, no label or anything on them, bit creepy really. Not from Ian of course, but no idea who would do something like that. Needless to say, had a bad night's sleep last night as a result. Her business partner would reply and urge Sadie to contact the police, but Sadie would choose not to do so. Six days would pass after Sadie receiving the unsolicited bunch of flowers when on the evening of January 14th at 7.15pm, horse fanatic Sadie Hartley would return home in her Audi sports car after visiting the stables to ride her horse. At 8pm, Sadie would receive a knock on her door and opens it to find Sarah Williams gazing back at her. Before any exchanges of words had taken place, Sarah forced her way into the residence, branding a 500,000 volt stun gun and incapacitating Sadie with the weapon. 
As Sadie's defences were immobilised, Williams uncovered a nine-inch kitchen knife and began repeatedly stabbing Sadie in all areas of her body, including her right eye, spinal column and even slicing her tongue. In total, Williams stabbed Miss Hartsley a total of 41 times and as her lifeless body lay face down in a pool of her own blood, Williams calmly fled the scene. Miss Hartsley's dead body was discovered the day after, on January 15th, after a work colleague became concerned and a full-scale murder investigation would proceed. Authorities wasted no time utilising every resource they had and stayed hot on the heels of the unknown assailants. Speaking to all close family members and Ian himself who was promptly returning to the UK, they were able to single out possible enemies establishing Sarah Williams as a suspect. Upon recovering footage from all the working CCTVs within the area and analysing them, they were able to positively identify a vehicle registration of a car behaving suspiciously as far back as December 16th, 2015, registered to Sarah Williams. On January 17th, Sarah Williams was arrested at her home and taken into custody. Police! You're under arrest on suspicion of murder. Police! You're under arrest on suspicion of murder. Police! She denied having anything to do with the murders, but a search of the property would find traces of Hartley's DNA in her bathroom and on a pair of glasses, as well as blood belonging to Sadie in the footwell of a Renault Clio. Taken from a report on the findings written by a British newspaper covering the case, they found boot prints at the scene, traced back to the exact pair brought by Williams in the weeks before the killing. They found their dirty phones, the Renault Clio used during the murder, CCTV of the pair repeatedly visiting the street where Sadie lived, bank records of the purchases of the stun gun, GPS tracking device and clothing that was to be worn to carry out the murder. And once they caught up with horse instructor Walsh, they had her diary confessions, the murder weapon, the stun gun, clothes and towels used to clean up. During the trial, they attempted to blame each other for the murder. But the jury were unfazed and far from committing the perfect murder, it was one that would see them facing the rest of their lives behind bars. Further investigation uncovered a 17 month long premeditated plot to take Sadie Hartley's life. The timeline is as follows. August 2014, Sarah Williams and Katrina Walsh begin planning Sadie Hartley's murder. September 2014, Entry appears in Katrina Walsh's diary. Sarah came round so got caught up in endless murder plot for Ian's other half. Sarah Williams sent a letter to Sadie Hartley, telling her that she and Ian had enjoyed a sexual relationship for over a year and the sex was the best he's ever had. November 2014. Ex-fireman Mr Johnston and Miss Hartley moved in together at their £500,000 detached stone property in Sunnybank Road, Helmshaw, Lancashire. May 2015. Williams and Mr Johnston bump into each other at Chill Factor and mobile phone message contact between the pair reignites. June 2015. Another entry in Katrina Walsh's diary. We're also seriously talking of getting rid of her opponent. I agree is probably a good play. She does seem to be a totally evil bitch. August 2015. Sarah Williams tries to recruit Katrina Walsh's ex-husband, Kevin Walsh. Further entries in Katrina Walsh's diary. Wow, I may get to be instrumental in helping remove this awful woman. This may happen. Wow, I'm unexpectedly excited by it. We're so buzzing so much. I need a southern comfort to wind down a bit. I have no moral qualms, just a serious don't let us get caught twinge. September 2015. Katrina Walsh refers in her diary to thoughts of a hit on a motorcycle. October 2015. Sarah has ordered a GPS tracker on my credit card to be delivered here and will give me cash for it. That's fine as I'm not going to be involved at the sharp end. November 2nd, 2015. Sarah Williams gets possession of the GPS tracker. December 2nd, 2015. Christmas party at the Chill Factor in Manchester, attended by Sadie Hartley, Ian Johnston and Sarah Williams. 
the GPS tracker is attached to Mr Johnston's car. December 9th 2015 Sarah Williams and Katrina Walsh travel to Darmstadt in Germany using the Hull to Rotterdam ferry to buy the stun gun. Further entries in Katrina Walsh's diary. I said no matter what's her way of testing the bitch, then she could do with that zapper or she risked being injured herself. So we'll get a trip to Germany out of this. Took ages to wind down, all the excitement of plotting the perfect murder. December 16th and 17th. 2015. Sarah Williams now knows where Sadie Hartley lives. She travels to her home in Helmshaw to put the recharged GPS tracker on Mr Johnston's car. December 19th to 26th, 2015. Sarah Williams and Katrina Walsh travel to France for a week's holiday with Sarah Williams' old companion, David Hardwick. January 4th, 2016. Sarah Williams sent a text to Katrina Walsh saying, Don't forget to crack on with your shopping, suddenly it's time. January 5th, 2016. Katrina Walsh buys the murder weapon, a knife, from the Tesco store in Broughton using her club card. Sarah Williams travels again to Sunnybank Road to retrieve the tracker from Ian Johnston's car. January 6th, 2016. Sarah Williams travels to Sadie Hartley's place of work in Nutsford. Hartley tailor medical communications and stays there for two hours. Williams then travels to Bury to buy a pair of binoculars from Argos before going to Helmshaw. January 7, 2016. Sarah Williams and Katrina Walsh travel to Sadie's home in Helmshaw. They buy a three pound bunch of flowers at the Tesco Haslingdon store and Katrina delivers the flowers to the victim. Both defendants then travel to the nearby Holden Arms pub before returning two hours later to Sunnybank Road. January 10th, 2016, Sarah Williams and Katrina Walsh buy a Renault Clio in Littleton, the car used to travel to Helmshaw for the murder. January 12th, 2016, Sarah Williams travels to the Marks and & Spencers and Dishman's store at Cheshire Oaks Retail Park near Elmsmere Port to buy clothes and boots. January 13th, 2016. Katrina Walsh captured on CCTV buying petrol for her Vauxhall Astra, the car used to pick up Sarah Williams after the murder. January 14th, 2016. The day of the murder. 3 p.m. Sarah Williams went to work, but at 3pm called David Hardwick and told him she wasn't feeling well and was going home. 5.58pm Sarah Williams sent a text to David Hardwick saying, Just had another cup of tea, going to switch light off and have a nap now. Will ring when I wake up as long as not late. 8pm Sarah Williams murders Sadie Hartley first stunning her with a 500,000 volt stun gun, then stabbing her 41 times. 9.48 p.m. Sarah Williams rang Katrina Walsh to say, job done, and to meet her at the car park in Ellesmere Port. 10.51 p.m. Sarah Williams arrives at Ellesmere Port car park and is joined by Katrina Walsh at 11.01 p.m. 11.30 p.m. Both defendants arrive at the car park on Treeborf Road in Chester in the Astra. 11.55pm Katrina Walsh walks back to the car park carrying the knife, stun gun and boots to dispose of them. 35-year-old Sarah Williams has been given a life sentence and ordered to serve a minimum of 30 years and 57-year-old Katrina Walsh has been sentenced to life and ordered to serve a minimum of 25 years behind bars.